Today we're talking about where to find parts and components for your embedded systems project. Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're talking again about embedded systems and specifically about a challenge that a lot of new embedded systems people run into, and that is, how do I find the parts I'm looking for? How do I find components for the project I'm working on? Now, I recently posted a video in which I gave you some different tips and advice for getting started in embedded systems. And one of those tips was to start building something, to pick a project, to get your hands dirty. And this video is sponsored by nextpcb.com. They have provided discount links down in the description. So when you are getting your hands dirty and you're making that first project and you need to make a printed circuit board, they can help you do it without spending too much money. But a lot of brand new people are saying, hey, I'm ready, I've got a project idea, I'm ready to get my hands dirty, but I don't have any idea where to start. I don't have any idea where to find components. I have no idea what components I should look for. In some cases, you may not even know what they're called. So let me see if I can help. Now in this video, I'm going to be using a few different websites. None of these people are sponsoring this video. They're not paying me anything to say nice things about them or mean things about them. These are just sites that are available. They're common. They're sites that I use and I recommend to my students. So take that for what it is. Now, if you are an absolute beginner, like beginner, so much of a beginner that you don't know the difference between a resistor and a capacitor, then I wanna point you back to a former video, link in the description. They gave you some recommendations for reading materials specifically. You might wanna start with a good book. You might also wanna start looking at some other people's projects as you start to build a little bit of your understanding of how circuits work and how electricity works. You may wanna check out some different projects that people have posted on sites like hackaday.io. I've been doing this for over a decade and I still do this occasionally just because it gives me an idea of how people do things and how they may approach the same problem differently than I would. And I learn a lot from what other people do. But one of the things that you learn from watching other people's projects is you can see what components they use. You see what parts, what part numbers, what part suppliers, and you go, oh, that's really interesting. I didn't know that was available. Okay, now another great place that I want you to look at really quick with me is SparkFun Electronics. Now, I'm a big SparkFun fan, not because they have the most parts out there or the cheapest prices, but because they focus on fun and education as well as selling electronics components. So if I'm coming here to their website, one thing I love is this learn tab right here. You can definitely check out this. It's got all sorts of tutorials and how to's, just really great guides for getting started. Of course, it'll help you with their projects, but it'll also just teach you a lot about embedded systems and about wiring and circuits and things like that. Another thing I really like about SparkFun is they tend to pick commonly used components that work well with common platforms like Arduino or like these STM32s. And so a lot of their components tend to work well together, which is always a plus. Now let's say I'm on the site and I know that I want to build a project. Let's say my project is I want to make my own plant water. And I've got an idea that for this, I'm gonna need some kind of sensor. I want some way to tell when my plant needs to be watered. I could use a timer, but maybe instead I want to use a sensor. So I could come down here and maybe I just jump into their sensors. And right here, I'm, I'm not really seeing any particular sensor that says soil. So maybe I could come up here and just search for soil. That's one option. And I'm gonna see a bunch of soil sensors. Now, if I didn't find what I was looking for, then another thing that I definitely recommend is just going back to their sensors page and just scrolling through. Now, I know I found stuff on the, on the previous page and we'll go back and look at some of that. But one of the things that I point out to my students is that sometimes when you're new to this space, you don't know what's available. And just scrolling through the list of sensors they have available, you might be sitting here going, oh, you can get a temperature sensor that's waterproof for 12 bucks. And you might be able to find a, a cheaper alternative somewhere else. But it just shows you like, wow, that is available. And I didn't realize that that was available in that form factor. Same with things like pulse oximeters and heart rate sensors, things like that. You may not realize just how easy these things are to come by. Now, if we scroll down here, I think the soil sensor should be down here. We'll go to the next page. Um, yeah, so right here. So if, if we happen to find the soil moisture sensor that we're looking for, we click on it, we can come in here and we can see this is the option that they're giving us. Now, one of the things that I love about SparkFun that's really good as an educational tool, even if you say this isn't the one that you're gonna end up buying, is they have this document section that has things like schematic and EagleCAD files. So basically they're telling you how they made this thing, which is really awesome and really rare for companies to be just like, hey, by the way, here's how we actually built it. But it's fantastic for you as someone that's learning because you can actually look at the schematic. You can actually see what components are on this, 
what traces, how they wired it up. Because let's say that this isn't exactly the form factor you want to use. Maybe you can't use the color red for whatever reason. Or let's say you need a slightly different shape or you can't do screw terminals. These screw terminals up here in the top, which are just, that's the connector that they're providing, which are convenient for some cases, but maybe you can't, maybe that's too bulky. You just kind of can't make it work and you need to craft your own. Well, check out the schematic. I'm sure you could make your own based on what you see in there. And they also have things like their hookup guide here, which is going to tell you basically how to actually hook the thing up, how to use their component, which is great. And you can also come back here and you can check out on GitHub. I'm guessing they've got a bunch of maybe code examples. Uh, now this is the hardware files, which is also really cool. So in case you wanted to come down here and get the Eagle CAD schematics, so like let's say you wanted to actually make your own version of what they made. You want to have our sponsor next PCB make it for you. By all means, you could just take these Eagle files and use that to create your own custom version. Okay, so that's SparkFun. I really just, I'm a huge fan. I can't say enough about them. SparkFun, if you're listening out there and you ever want to collaborate on something like a giveaway or a programming contest, maybe we'll, I'll just reach out. We'll talk separately, but uh, yeah, I'd love to work with you guys. But yeah, if you have time, don't neglect just the fact that you can go through and look at a lot of the components they have available. And these can give you ideas for the current project or future projects, the projects you haven't even thought of yet, but you will think of once you realize that you can get a LoRa transceiver module for nine bucks. I mean, so this happens to me all the time. I discover a new sensor and all of a sudden I'm thinking, oh, I could use that. Now, as you get more competent and you're really looking for components, there's two other websites I wanna point out. One is DigiKey and the other is Mouse or Electron. For seasoned engineers, these are the two biggest places that people go for components. I definitely order things from both of them. I personally like DigiKey's website a little better. I think it's a little easier to find what I'm looking for. But let's say that I'm looking for a component. Let's say I'm looking for a particular capacitor. Um, I can just start by searching and I can come in here and just say, yeah, I want, okay, yeah, give me capacitors. And it's going to say, okay, we've got a bunch of capacitors. Narrow it down a little. Let's say I want ceramic capacitors because yeah, I want something small and cheap and fairly robust. And so then you get all of these possibilities. If I want to, I can see what manufacturers are making them. I can see what series, uh, maybe I don't care about those things. And I know that I want a, let's say I want a 0.1 microfarad capacitor, uh, wherever that is right here. So 0.1 microfarad. So if I do this, then I can all, I can apply and that's going to then down below, I'm going to be able to see these are all the different capacitors that provide that. Now, you know, there's a lot of form factors so let's say that i know i want a particular type like a particular i want i know i want surface mount you know i could select these and you know apply those so basically i can filter down and get what i want I find that DigiKey and Mauser are much more useful when I really have a good idea of what I'm looking for. At least I know what type of component I'm looking for, but I may not know exactly what manufacturer makes it or which one's the lowest tolerance or lowest cost or things like that. I know what I'm looking for, but I'm trying to filter it down. So these are both great resources. Like I said, I tend to have an easier time finding what I'm looking for on DigiKey's website, but Mauser often has components that I can't find on DigiKey, so I definitely use both. So anyway, that's it for today. I hope this helps you find parts for your next project. When you get that project done and you are ready to actually make a board, I hope you go with our sponsor, nextpcb.com. Check them out. Discounts down below in the description. Like this video if it was helpful. Subscribe if you want to. Make sure you don't miss the next one. And until next time, I'll see you later.